let's take an inside look at how a for each loop works. Remember, a for each loop does an iteration for each record in a collection. We begin with a collection, specifically a list of leads. Let's add a few leads to our collection. First, we'll add Hat Girl. Then we add Beard Man. Finally, we add The Boss. Our lead list has three records in it. And yes, I do realize this isn't syntactically proper code. Having a picture of a man in a Star Wars shirt is not a working substitute for an actual lead variable. But that part isn't important because we want to focus on the loop syntax instead. So now on the right hand side, we're going to do a for each loop against our lead list. This is the syntax. We start with for. Then inside the parentheses, we create a variable. Add a colon, then we type our collection variable. Finally, we add open and closing brackets to house the code block that runs during each loop iteration. The variable we're creating on the left must be the same data type of each record in our collection. That's because for each record in our collection, we'll assign it to this variable, run the code in our loop, then move on to the next record in our collection and repeat. This syntax should look familiar to you because it's the same thing we do with trigger.new in every trigger. Remember, trigger.new is always a list of S objects. In fact, most of the time, you'll be using lists of S objects when doing for each loops. Now inside our loop, we have our code block that we want to repeat. Here, we're setting default field values on our lead. And here, we set some anti-spam values on the lead. Basically, this loop sets default field values and anti-spam values for all leads in the given collection. Now let's walk through how our for each loop evaluates. First up is hat girl. Remember that lists preserve the order of records inside it. Since we added hat girl first, she's the first up in our loop. Our my lead variable gets temporarily assigned to hat girl and the code inside our for each loop executes. Since our code updates the fields on the my lead variable, and hat girl is assigned to the my lead variable for this iteration, hat girl's fields are changed. Now that hat girl's fields have been changed and we can be assured she won't be spammed, our for each loop moves on to the next record, beard man. The my lead variable now points to beard man instead of hat girl. Don't worry, hat girl's fields have already been updated, so we don't need to worry about our changes to her getting lost at this point. The code inside our for each loop executes, and now Beardman's fields have also been updated. Finally, we move on to the last record in our lead list, the boss. We temporarily assign the my lead variable to the boss, run our code block, and now the boss's fields have been updated. So now by the end of this loop, what we're left with is the same list of three leads. However, the fields of each lead in this list have been completely updated according to our for each loops logic. Everyone's anti-spam fields have been set. This just means the fields are set in Apex, however. This doesn't mean the fields have been saved back into our Salesforce database. We'll talk more about this when we cover DML shortly. Now let's move on to the for loop. Remember, this is the loop you use when you want to loop a specific number of times. You'll be using this type of loop often in test classes. Basically in a for loop, you tell it to run a certain number of times by setting a starting number, a run condition, and an increment amount. Here's how that works. Of course, you start with the for and open and close parentheses. Inside the parentheses, there are three sections separated by semicolons. In the first section, you're actually creating a variable. This variable is always an integer and it's almost always called the letter I, which I consider short for 
iteration number. By the way, ignore the variable naming rules just this one time. You'll often set i to 1. This first section is your loop's starting count. In the first iteration of your loop, you'll have access to the i variable and it will equal to 1. Next, we set the run condition. As long as this condition evaluates to true, your loop will run its next iteration. You set this condition less than or equal to the number of times you want your loop to run. So in this case, we want our loop to run exactly 200 times. So we say, keep running this loop as long as i, the iteration variable, is less than or equal to 200. Note, we use less than or equal to 200. If we just use less than, our loop would only run 199 times. Finally, we set the increment. This tells our loop to increment our iteration variable by this amount after each iteration. We type i++ because that's another way of saying add one to this value. We could have also typed i equals i plus one, but you'll normally see it written as i++. It's possible to increment i by more than one each iteration, but you rarely see this happen. So to summarize this entire for loop in one sentence, it basically says, start our loop by setting i equals to one, add one to i after each iteration, and keep looping as long as i is less than or equal to 200. Thus, our loop will run exactly 200 times. Here's an example of a for loop in practice. It's not uncommon to see code very similar to this in a test class because you often need to create many records. We'll cover the reasoning behind this in a future course. Back to the loop. Here we're making a for loop that'll run exactly 10 times. I know this because i starts at one, it increments by one each loop iteration, and it'll stop looping after i equals 10. Specifically, this code's purpose is to create exactly 10 accounts. Notice inside the loop that the code actually uses i as a variable. We're including i in both the name of the account and in its website. This is helpful because it lets you differentiate the records you're creating, and it could help you bypass any deduplication rules you may have in your org. For example, if your org has a rule that doesn't let two accounts have the exact same name, using i in your loop makes sure every account will have a different name. As we run through this loop, here's what the output will be. The first time the loop iterates, it'll create a new account with name sfdc1 and website sfdc1.com. The one comes from the variable i. The second time it loops, it'll create another account with sfdc2 as the name and sfdc2.com as the website. Again, the number two comes from the variable i. This pattern continues until the loop creates its final account when i equals 10.